the first to know in Sempi TV. And that na ukutimu ewa mrashe bebe fia na enye asem kutuwa ninye na eye seat mako mako e nine a abans mana kenford bagman etimi e declare vacant a supreme court and so e de babe tu e jase sa ruli na abans mana kenford bagman etimi de babe tu jan enya de se beye juma because uh, alexander kwame na afenyo maken e de asem no ababe dayeno enti wan e guso a wodi asem nti abans mana kenford Bagbin into me and funny ruling into me and massa. A cobasana and DC minority in Susa one and Tiasia and Tiasia China China or more and a year majority. na Nipa a year can one more as a winner and PP a man you couldn't and peace no a woman three. Sanso and a NDC a man you couldn't so and peace and so a woman back or na breaking news. A Ababa toy up no so and they say, Yeah, mammy Cynthia Morrison. Se si si e wa re dro e de e fri re si ni a o no e ndo se NPP a man yoko no e candidate inti e no e kwa kwa basa a o yin hon e de fri mo di a nan che se NPP a man yoko no e be ti mi a kwa so e ye majority because a fe yi e na ma a meno e ti mi e de a basa e o no wa re dro e de e fri re si ni inti NPP a man yoko no e mfa o bi e mfa e n si ho se o no e na e ba be tuwa na e juma so a meno ka se i di e a year ni jisem e de ama NPP ama nyoko no ne nyon no nkwa kwa bia sante wan ene wan ake e kike e ka wan so e ya diye te NPP ama nyoko no ene wan e ye meeting a ye beshe we bie non so e be kwa 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 k and he has been said. Once that is done, uh, we await the decision of the minority. Uh, on the side of the minority leader, he said they are sitting where they are sitting because of the announcement of Mr. Speaker. So until they hear of another announcement, they aren't going to move. So uh, let's wait and see. Mr. Speaker also concluded that after formally announcing to the House uh, when communication is going to agents in the Supreme Court and other yeah. matters with some consultation. I don't know what that consultation is about. But we avail ourselves to any call. Like he called us into a meeting. He respected me. And that is why we are we attended upon him. We are law abiding, as I said, and MPP will remain in our offices until the right thing is done. But it's important to also point out that. Honorable members, I don't have a copy of any of the official reports. So we'll proceed now to item 5, formal communication by the speaker. Honorable members, as you may recall, on Thursday, I informed the House, pursuant to Standing Order 18 of the Standing Orders of Parliament, on the occurrence of vacancies in the House in relation to four honorable members. Yesterday, I received a process from the Supreme Court, which is a ruling from the Supreme Court pursuant to an ex parte application directing Parliament to recognize and allow the four affected members of Parliament to duly represent their constituents and conduct full scope of duties of their offices as members of Parliament pending a final determination of a suit filed by Honorable Alexander Afenyo Market. By Article 102 of the Constitution, 1992, and Order 64 1 
of the standing orders of Parliament, I note that we currently have a quorum to transact business, but not to take decisions. I want to read the said Article 102 of the Constitution. It reads, a quorum of Parliament, apart from the person presiding, shall be one-third of all the members of Parliament. As presently constituted, the numbers definitely as far above one-third of the members of Parliament. But by Article 104, the numbers are not sufficient for us to take decisions. And I'll quote Article 104. Article 1041 says, except as otherwise provided in this constitution, matters in parliament shall be determined by the votes of the majority of members present and voting with at least half of all the members of parliament present. Honorable members, we don't have at least half of all the members of parliament present. Consequently, in view of the current circumstances, the fact that there is a question on the composition and constitution of parliament, and having regard to the public interest and the exigencies of the state of affairs in parliament, I will proceed to, in accordance with standing orders 59, adjourn the house indefinitely. That is sine die. I want to quote standing orders 59.1. It says, the speaker may, in consultation with leadership, suspend a meeting of the house indefinitely or for a period determined by the speaker having regard to the public interest and the exigencies of the state of affairs in the country. Honorable members, I have consulted leadership and I am exercising my discretion to decide to suspend the meeting of the House indefinitely. The House is accordingly adjourned sine die. This whole uh, behavior uh, of, of the caucuses, because really uh, the issue of how minority and majority Given the Speaker's ruling on Thursday, even if there was a change or a, a change in the balance of power in Parliament, it had to be communicated by the Speaker as such. There was all this back and forth, even there were times where um, MPs were challenging uh, or calling out um, um, journalists for not referring to them as but that, that is not a formal process. Mm. That has to be communicated by the speaker that henceforth this person is Mr. Majority or Mr. Minority. And that this, because that is how it is done. It doesn't just come out of thin air because uh, a vacancy has occurred and therefore automatically everybody can hold themselves up or can go and sit left or right. If you recall, Mm. When we, we went through the process in 2021, there was a formal process where the, the side that had the numbers, once it was determined, would communicate to the speaker that this is our leader. And the, the, the speaker would communicate 
that this is the majority leader, this is the minority leader. And then everybody accorded the person the right, you know, titles. So how every, anybody could be going around just, you know, declaring that I am majority, minority, and therefore acting in this kind of way, I, I, I found it really, really strange. And it's completely unnecessary. And, and even in terms of the court case, given the timelines that the Supreme Court gave, uh, seven days for statement of case, seven days for joint memorandum of issues to be settled. Within 10, 14 days, this matter could have been clarified. And then whatever procedures of parliament that are needed to be addressed would have been addressed. Why couldn't anybody wait for these things to be addressed? And with all these things, I, I am a bit surprised because 10 days will not... <laughs> for me, take away uh, anybody's rights or anything within that period. So just restraining ourselves and holding on to allow for some clarity, because there has been a lot of opinion as to jurisdiction, uh, correct interpretation, mm. which are all matters of law that needed to be clarified, which the Supreme Court at the end will still be the best place to go to get those interpretations done. So I, I think some of this conduct I really has been uh, a lot of, you know, much ado about nothing, really. Mm. And uh, we hope that even now we would sort of allow the process to take its rightful course. There are real matters of law that must be addressed. In our statement, we also made the point that we really need to look at the issue about disqualification of, you know, uh, people close to election because you leave them with no remedy. When this equation was uh, disqualified, at least you could have a by-election. Mm. When you do that close election, where 90 days before elections, you cannot hold by-election. Yeah, There's that's, no remedy. That's what the Constitution says. You cannot hold exactly. elections. Exactly. So there are all these challenges within the Constitution that we need to address so that it doesn't create these uh, challenges, you know, politically and in terms of our government mm. for us. We've been hearing you know, from looking the, to the future. Mm. We've been hearing from the MPP caucus leader, Alexander Veilmarkin, this morning. He just clarified for us that indeed the bailiff has served um, the legal department of parliament with the Supreme Court's ruling. Now the speaker has also directed his lawyers to file another case staying the Supreme Court's order. How will this yeah. pan out? Well, there has to be a hearing, of course, mm -hmm. um, because uh, an application to set it aside, uh, uh, and this time certainly it cannot be as party because, I mean, given the gravity of the issue, this is a matter that everybody should be heard and should be heard expeditiously. Uh, so that that could be addressed. Um, then the speaker will make a choice uh, once the decision can be made whether to set it aside because it, I, I believe the speaker is making the case that in reality he has not made any decision. Mm. For but but is the speaker be... compelled to actually uphold the initial ruling from the Supreme Court, bearing in mind that his lawyers are going to actually ask for a stay of execution of that order? Is he compelled to do that? Well, the point is that if you if you have applied to set aside uh, a direction of the Supreme Court, then by just by implication, you have recognized that the Supreme Court has made a judgment, a decision. Mm. So I think that that is, that is moot. I mean, that's not an argument really uh, to be contested. By by making the application, you recognize. And that, that is proper for Parliament to do. So, per the Supreme Court's ruling, the MPP caucus in Parliament is still the majority. Let's come in the studio. Could you stay with me and just get um, Winston Amor? You were making a point about this. Now, I'm wondering, with the Speaker filing this new suit, asking for a stay of execution, it also means that he has acknowledged, received of the initial ruling from the Supreme Court. What happens next? Well, I mean, I have told you that um, the speaker, uh, you know, is a lawyer, right? And 
once um, they are served, at this point in time, the speaker would only do what he believes is right. Mm. And uh, lawyers have different terms they use. And so he's resorted to what he thinks works for him. And that's why he's also staying. Uh, the next interpretation he puts on it is what we would all find out, OK? Uh, if uh, that becomes a situation uh, that means, OK, so the status quo remains by his ruling, or this other one, we will find out. Because today, uh, the lawyers have themselves become confused as to what is permissible and what is not permissible under the laws of this country. So let's just wait. I mean, my point always is that for the legal questions, let's wait. Mm -hmm. The speaker would come out. Once he comes out to announce his next line of action, because what we are faced with right now, for me, the most important thing is that if the uh, speaker also files a case at the Supreme Court, um, the same speed that was used in hearing the NPP case should be used in hearing the speaker's case, OK? So that we move. And, you know, Kodra Sante had made the point earlier that, um, you know, this is something that could have been dealt with in a 10-day period, and so you probably didn't have to rush into a decision, something that I would associate with. All I want to say is that the judiciary is a key arm of government. And at no point in this country should the judiciary uh, not be trusted by the citizenry, contrary to what the Afrobarometer is telling us. Mm. So I am concerned about that. And so now, that is why I say the judiciary should actually take steps to get the trust of the people. And it starts today. It starts today because the same speed must apply to this one. And then mm. at the end of the day, the rule on the case, we all find, I mean, uh, whoever it favors can go on a review. Why not? Then we move on in this country. But as, as I've always indicated, as to who constitutes the majority or minority is not a pressing thing of this country. Okay, I mean, elections are two months away. As to who is in the majority or who is in the minority, it is not something that is going to change anything because we operate a system that at the end of the day, every law that you, you even pass must be signed, assented to by the president. We've seen the president even not assenting to a private member's bill, which has to go back uh, to parliament and the speaker unhappy with it. So. Uh, this is, yes, to galvanize party core base. Well, that's uh, something that political parties would take advantage of. Uh, but for those of us who are watching, I think that much ado about nothing, really. Is that the case, Raymond? Much ado about nothing? Yes, when it comes to who sits where. I mean, see, the very things that, and I heard the, the, the claims that, oh, we repeal the uh, E-Levy. We will do the things that without power we couldn't do. Mm. Yes, I'm waiting to see how that plays out properly in, in this parliament and how that's going to be done. Because how they have operated generally has been that government brings business, then the leader who represents government would actually be the one pushing that business on the floor. These things will come through at the end, and it's very possible to do so. You recall that Ras Mubarak in his last days in parliament got some amendments to laws, and uh, 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 one of those were the earliest times we have used this private member's bill theory properly in our parliament. I get that. But I also think that, again, we are not having the bigger conversations about state two months to the election at this time. I think political parties are more concentrated on who weighs what. And to me, it's becoming very, and as Bryce Simmons has said before, we are not taking advantage of these crises. Mm. First, the crisis on the economy and its related debt exchange programs, and subsequently even to do with illegal mining and the things that flow from that, to make corrections that are long-standing, to make corrections that impact the future of this country more positively. I will be very excited if both minority and majority MPs are up in arms over uh, dealings with Galamse yeah. and how well or how poorly we are fighting this menace, even in the current renewed or additional enforcement that we have put out there. But when it appears that you are seeking to score political points for your parochial <laughs> partisan uh, interest, you leave out the majority of the people in this country who really do not care about the political point scoring. I hope you get a point. Mm. So that is where my difficulty is. That's why I agree with what he says, is much ado about nothing. And frankly, if you do this